Good evening, and welcome to tonight's meeting of the Southbridge Redevelopment Authority. I would like to call this meeting to order, and I will take roll call. Rick Clements. Present. Holly Christo. Present. Arthur Martin. Present. And Andrew Murch. Present. I'd like to welcome everybody tonight uh, to a presentation of what we've dubbed Urban Agenda 101. Uh, a gentleman here by the name of Jeff Fasser will go into detail on what the Redevelopment Authority does, what it constitutes as far as the Urban Renewal Plan and Revitalization Plan, as well as many other points of interest and information uh, regarding our duty and purpose for the Town of Southbridge. So I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Jeff Fasser. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, and thank you for having us here tonight, and uh, appreciate everybody's time tuning in to listen to this. Um, so this is a quick overview of the agenda tonight. Uh, this is the first of three uh, sessions we're going to have to educate the community about the Urban Renewal Program, which is a state program, as well as your specific downtown Urban Renewal Plan. And then upcoming in May, end of May, there'll be another uh, public meeting to talk more specific, uh, specifically about actions that will be coming out of uh, this updated look at the Urban Renewal Plan that you already have. And then June will be a summary um, of all the findings that we've come up with in the last three months. Um, once we go through the agenda tonight, then there will be time at the end for questions and comments. So first of all, I, I kind of gave a quick overview of our schedule. Uh, again, it's a very condensed schedule. The, the town was fortunate enough to get a grant through what's called the Urban Agenda Program. Uh, that required that the, the grant be spent by the end of June. Um, so we spent April updating data collection about the area and preparing for this presentation. Uh, in May, we'll be talking with the Redevelopment Authority about certain actions that are in the plan now and actions that they may want to add, as well as potential funding sources for those various actions. In June, we will finalize both those items being actions and funding and make a final presentation to town uh, in general as well as specific boards and commissions. I also would like everybody to understand that every Thursday, the Redevelopment Authority has a meeting at 6.30 p.m. because this is a very fast-track project. We do meet on a weekly basis, and those are up open public meetings if anybody's interest, interested in tuning in. Uh, the final deliverable will be what we're calling a handbook to the Redevelopment Authority that, again, will summarize the actions that they uh, are being recommended to them to move forward, what are the recommended uh, funding uh, sources for those actions, a assigned responsibilities, who's responsible for doing what, and um, hopefully set the stage for continued improvements to the downtown area. So first of all, uh, part of the, tonight's meeting is to really educate everybody on a quick education on the Urban Renewal Program. The Urban Renewal Program is a state program uh, under Mass General Law, typically referred to as Chapter 121B, Section of Mass General Law. And it allows communities to establish urban renewal areas and it's really an economic development tool or an economic development strategy. It's intended to address parts of communities that are underperforming economically. It could be vacant buildings, vacant lots, buildings that are older and out of repair, um, poor living conditions, maybe old infrastructure and roadways, et cetera. And the area on its own hasn't been able to revitalize itself and there's really a need for public involvement to uh, the public to, to kind of invest in the area itself and take some steps to help encourage investment in the area and help turn things around. Um, again, it's the second bullet here. It, it's, I, I underlined the need for public sector assistance. So that's why, that's the purpose of the Urban Renewal Program is to give local communities the ability to provide assistance in a number of ways that they couldn't otherwise uh, provide if there was no Urban Renewal Plan. Typically, urban renewal plans are implemented by redevelopment authorities, which you have here in Southbridge. There are a couple exceptions to that in the state, but I would say 95% of the time, urban renewal projects are undertaken by redevelopment authority agencies. So you have a redevelopment authority. I found out today it was actually established back in 1961. So back in the heyday of urban renewal, i um, not quite sure what was done over the last 60 years, but I know in the early 2000s there was a kind of a 
revitalization of the redevelopment authority itself, and they became much more active back then and started meeting to pull together the current downtown urban renewal plan. Currently, the redevelopment authority has four members who introduced themselves earlier, and there was one vacant seat on the, the redevelopment authority. So as one of the action items coming out of this whole process, um, there's a recommendation of filling that vacant seat, which is a state appointee, typically comes from the governor's office, but technically it's called a state appointee. Um, as I said, the redevelopment authority really got reactivated in the early 2000s and started pulling together an urban renewal plan, which was finalized and approved locally as well as at the state level because they do require state approval in 2011. And since then, the town has been taking certain actions that have uh, been uh, identified in that plan. But overall, urban renewal plans allow uh, redevelopment authorities to undertake a broad variety of actions. And that could be uh, establishing design standards for what can happen within an urban renewal area, and you actually do have design standards for downtown. A redevelopment authority can participate in real estate development and commercial revitalization, as in they can participate as in negotiating deals, acquiring property, investing in property, helping private entities invest in their own property through loans or other grant programs that may be available. Um, redevelopment authorities can also borrow money. They can invest funds that they may get out of their various actions. They can apply for and receive grants, as has been done for, for this work here. Um, they can accept gifts and requests. So if anybody in town wishes to gift the redevelopment authority something, I'm sure they'd be open to that. Primarily money or land, but you never know. There could be other things that people would like to gift to the redevelopment authority. A redevelopment authority can assemble and dispose of land, so they can acquire property, they can receive property, again, as a, as a gift, or it may be town-owned property that's transferred to them, and then dispose or sell of land. Dispose is a state term they like to use, but they can uh, sell property also. And it, we're not trying to avoid the, the issue. Eminent domain is typically a, a dirty word when it comes to urban renewal, but urban renewal authorities, um, redevelopment authorities are able to acquire property by eminent domain if necessary. But th these days, every redevelopment authority tries to avoid that as much as possible. Most acquisitions are what are called negotiated acquisitions, where the redevelopment authority sits with a property in order and they they agree on a, an acquisition price within certain parameters the state sets. Um, if property is acquired, the redevelopment authorities is required to relocate any business or occupants of that property um, if there's a need to do that. Um, for example, if a building needs to be demolished, then obviously the oc occupants or businesses would need to be relocated. If a building's to be rehabilitated, it may require relocation. If only a portion of a building is to be relocated, some <coughs> Occupants may be able to stay there and are not, do not need to be relocated. So right now, the urban renewal, well, the, this map that I'm showing now, the aerial of downtown, shows the current study area. And just to um, orient people briefly, to the top of this map is the uh, Quinnebog River. Um, to the bottom, running left to right, is Main Street. To the left side of the orange boundary is Foster Street. To the right, I mean, see, to the left side of the orange boundary is Hamilton Street. To the right side of the orange boundary is Foster Street. Kind of snap dab in the middle there is the Central Street parking lot. And we'll zoom in on this map in some other um, slides so people can get a better look at what, what is in this area here. Um, and this area was focused on years ago, and actually when the plan was originally set, it stopped at the Quinnebog River. For this study we're doing now, we've actually started, we've gone past the Quinnebog and a little bit up Worcester Street. Um, but it really was looking at the commercial opportunities along the main commercial streets, Central, Main, Hamilton, Hook, uh, and, part, and now we're looking at parts of uh, Worcester Street for commercial opportunities. What parcels are commercially, are commercial properties that are either vacant or underperforming, that is the focus. 
Um, we also are, wanted to make sure we included the Grand Trunk rail line for the, the bike path that's been talked about, as well as uh, taking more advantage of the Quinnebog River as an asset in your downtown. Um, items that were included or are included in the current urban renewal plan include acquisition of key parcels, which again we'll focus on later, infrastructure and utility upgrades, some of that you're seeing right now along Main Street, roadway and traffic improvements, which uh, some of you may be aware of what's being talked about for the Hamilton Hook La Rochelle connection. Streetscape enhancements or basically sidewalk improvements, pedestrian improvements, bicycle improvements as well as investments in open spaces. As I mentioned earlier, the, uh, um, the rail trail, made possibly a new downtown park, and taking advantage of the uh, Quinnebog River. Uh, this map here, you may not be able to see all of the wording on it, but was an illustrative plan that illustrated improvements that are in the current urban renewal plan. And a couple things I wanna highlight are one, the buildings that are in the bright orange were an indication of uh, commercial areas that were underperforming 10 years ago and that the redevelopment authority had identified for either acquisition or working with the property owners to help revitalize those key areas uh, along Central Street and um, La Rochelle Way. It also shows a new uh, open space park around the, the old depot or current registry building, river walk along the river, a bike path, roadway improvements, uh, and improvements to the Central Street parking lot. We can come back to this if there are more questions that people want to see things in more detail. But a lot of things have happened, and a lot of things have happened in recent years. As most people know, the Central Street parking lot has been improved and upgraded. The original urban renewal plan called for, act, for there to actually be a parking deck as part of that revitalization. Uh, at the time the revitalization was done, it was determined that the deck really wasn't necessary because um, things change and needs change. And also the town was looking to work within the available funding that they had, uh, but didn't feel as though the deck was critical. Um, as I mentioned earlier, there are public utility improvements happening along Main Street. There is a new retail marijuana facility that's coming into downtown along La Rochelle Way. And so it's addressing some of those parcels along La Rochelle now. And there is funding, that the design has occurred and there's funding in place for the new roadway improvements that will be a better uh, linkages between Hamilton Hook, La Rochelle Way, connecting over to Central and eventually over to Foster Street. So a number of things uh, have happened or are happening, which is great. And just to zoom in a little bit more so people understand the map if it's been a little hard to read, this is zoomed in on the central part of the, uh, the downtown area. Outlined in blue is the Central Street parking lot, the current improved limits of the Central Street parking lot. Uh, this plan here shows the roadway improvements that have been designed and are going through the mass DOT approval process. Uh, funding is in place for that, those roadway improvements to be constructed in a couple of years. I forget exactly when it's scheduled to start. Um, this area here outlines the property along La Rochelle Way that will become the retail marijuana facility as well as uh, other retail elements associated with that parcel. And when you put them all together, you can see the heart of the downtown area, the heart of the redevelopment area has or will be receiving, will be receiving quite a bit of investment uh, as was called for in the plan. And this uh, slide here shows the amount of investment uh, beginning from an initial road safety audit for 55,000. It really set the stage for the roadway improvements to the Central Street parking lot, which was a total of 1.2 million, of which the town contributed 190,000 for lighting, for, for safety purposes there. Um, the roadway improvements is about a $4.3 million construction project that is state funded, and the town funded the design for 400,000. Uh, the Main Street infrastructure improvements were around 2.4 million, some of that money is coming from what's called the CDBG uh, 
uh, program, community development block grant program, which are federal funds that flow through the state to the town, and then 1.3 million from the, in your local utility water and sewer funds. Um, so as you can see under the public uh, summary here, a lot of the investment that's happening in town town is a result of grant money, federal or state grant money. And I did the math earlier, I think it comes up to close to $6 million. The local funding is close to $2 million, with 1.3 of that being the, um, from the, the town's water and sewer uh, fund. I don't know if it's an enterprise fund or some sort of, it is an enterprise fund that, that funds those. In addition to that, there was private investment. The estimate for the recre recreational marijuana facility called Mellow Tiger is gonna be up to $1 million. And then people may know the McCarthy's, uh, Gabe and Johnny, who have, are currently making investment at the large buildings at the corner of Central and Main Street. So things have happened, but it's not time to sit back and rest on our laurels because there are still needs. There are still many vacant storefronts in the downtown, and unfortunately that has increased in the last year uh, due to COVID. There are still some absentee landlords who are not keeping their building up, buildings up into, in good shape. Um, there are not a lot of uh, amenities that are drawing people into downtown, and more jobs are needed. Uh, the population is about 59% low and moderate income, which is a state category and a state measuring tool that is used. So there are still a lot of needs. So what are some of those needs that were in the current plan that we want to uh, consider moving forward? As was talked about earlier, the rail trail or the, you know, what's gonna happen on the Grand Trunk, a river walk or at least more access to the river as a downtown amenity. Uh, the retail along Central Street, even though La Rochelle commercial areas are being addressed, there is still some need to address some of the uh, properties along Central Street. Storefronts need to be filled up. Upper floors of buildings need to be filled up. Housing uh, may be an uh, amenity that, not an amenity, a use that is uh, underserved in a downtown area, and we need to look at opportunities for that as well as open space. If we have more people living and working in downtown, we want to have the open space that, will, uh, that they need for a healthy lifestyle. And especially in having come through COVID, I think we all realize the benefits of more open space and being able to be outside and socialize uh, in a more of a healthy atmosphere when it's weather's uh, amenable to that. Um, getting back to that prior map that I mentioned that was an illustrative plan of downtown that identified the key actions that are in the current downtown plan. What we've done on that map is we've outlined in dashed blue those actions that have, act that have, have taken place already. And I went through all of them already. It's the, the roadway work, the parking lot, what's going to happen on La Rochelle, um, but there are still some items here that have not been addressed yet. And again, we talked about those in the last slide, the rail trail, Riverfront Park, um, some commercial properties on Central Street, et cetera. So what we're gonna be doing over the next month, we meaning the BSC group working with the Redevelopment Authority, we will be looking at those actions that have not yet been addressed. Do we wanna keep them in there? Most likely in most of these cases, yes, but maybe not in every case. And are there other actions we want to add in to the plan uh, for consideration moving forward? As I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, acquisition of property is a tool that uh, is given to a redevelopment authority if an urban renewal plan is approved and identifies certain parcels for acquisition as part of that approval. I want to make it clear, once a plan is approved, it doesn't mean the redevelopment authority has the ability to go in and acquire any property it wants within an urban renewal area. They can only acquire parcels that have been identified in the approved urban renewal plan. So this map here shows, again, the, the project area, and you can see the hatch lines that indicate parcels that were identified for acquisition or in some cases partial acquisition when the plan was approved uh, back in 2011. 
So zooming in and the core of the downtown, some of these parcels no longer need to be acquired. Um, the parcel, the commercial parcel along La Rochelle Way is going to be redeveloped by private means. Therefore, there's no need for the redevelopment authority to step in to um, take action to encourage commercial development on that parcel. It's happening. There was a small parcel that was part of the Central Street parking lot area. It was thought that partial acquisition in there might be necessary to help with the layout of the new Central Street parking lot. That was determined that that little square there, rectangle, was not necessary and the parking lot was improved. There is kind of an oblong shaped parcel at the corner of Hamilton and Hook that originally it was thought that that parcel may be needed as part of the roadway improvements. There's a small brick building on that parcel. Uh, once the roadway work was designed in more detail, it was determined that parcel was not needed for acquisition. So those actions are still in the plan, but there's no need for the redevelopment authority to acquire any of those properties. However, there are still other parcels identified for potential acquisition. Those are still in the plan, and those will, again, be one of the things we talk about over the next couple of months. So that's how things started. That's where we've been. And uh, earlier this year, um, the, the town looked at um, what could be done to make sure the redevelopment authority is you know, keeping its eye on the ball and moving things forward. And there was a grant program available called the Urban Agenda Program from the state. And the town applied for funding and was granted funding. And part of that funding is going to us, the BSC group, to help the redevelopment authority, again, understand what actions they want to keep in the plan, what actions they might want to add to the plan, and more, most importantly, what funding sources are available uh, to help implement those actions over time. So that's where we are right now, working with the Redevelopment Authority, and that's uh, what's helping to uh, sponsor this educational program tonight. The, um, a lot of the intent of the state's Urban Agenda grant program is very similar to what is uh, the goals of a, a urban renewal plan, is to bolster economic development, um, that, which has been impacted by COVID even more which is part of the Urban Agenda grant. Educate the community on the Urban Renewal Plan, what you have, what it can do for you, uh, as well as what the Redevelopment Authority can do specifically to help advance that. We want to build consensus for the actions and priorities over the next couple of months, and just make sure we're opening this up to as many people in the community as possible to get involved, to voice their opinion, to let us know their needs so that, if possible, the Redevelopment Authority can take all those needs into consideration if something can be done in the downtown area to help address those needs. So again, through the, uh, the Urban Agenda grant, they definitely want us to look at uh, addressing the vacancies in the downtown area, target key investment parcels, which again is part of the Urban Renewal Plan anyway, but we are taking a step back and re-examining those, and track employers, which will then provide jobs, which is very important for the downtown area, and overall improve the quality of life for uh, residents of Southbridge, as well as a sense of pride in your downtown. As I mentioned, this involves the Redevelopment Authority, it involves funding, but it also involves identifying partnerships that the Redevelopment Authority in the town can form with other entities to get things done, which could be uh, various departments at the federal and state level, uh, again, through grant programs or some of those federal and state agencies provide other services, uh, working with local organizations and businesses that, again, can team together and help move this plan forward. We also want to make sure we are uh, trying to encourage the participation of and understand the needs of any of the dis disenfranchised residents of the community. The grant itself specifically calls out the black and Latinx communities, but any disenfranchised community, we want to hear from them and make sure we're addressing everybody's needs. And then uh, through these partnerships, um, there may be other, other ways or other sources of funding through 
uh, local nonprofit organizations, um, certain um, private grant programs that may help uh, bring resources into the downtown area. Again, you've done a lot already. There's a lot of success, and people are going to see a lot more changes over the next two years. But we also want to make it clear that what you're trying to do has been done in other communities. Um, the, there are programs and ways to pull together all these different grant sources and organizations to help things happen. One example is downtown Hudson, uh, where BSC has been fortunate to do uh, work there, but over and above that, the state has recognized what Hudson has been doing over the last few years, pre-COVID and now into COVID, to really help stimulate economic investment in their downtown area. Uh, they've been able to draw in some very um, popular restaurants. They have done what's called placemaking or really bringing a new identity into their downtown area with wider sidewalks and uh, pedestrian amenities. Uh, they have a rail trail already that they are um, trying to build off of and make better connections to. And the result there has been an awesome downtown that people love to visit and walk through and visit the shops and eat the ice cream and uh, the flatbread pizzas and all the other goodies that are in downtown Hudson. And another example is from Wakefield, Rhode Island. Um, Heather Hamilton, who works with me at the BSC Group, is here with me this evening. And she, uh, after visiting Southbridge said, Jesus reminded her of Wakefield that she had visited in Rhode Island, which again has taken outdoor dining, plus some pedestrian improvements, plus a river walk, which has really put all those pieces together to make their downtown a very thriving downtown. So there are other examples to look for, look at, and we bring those ideas to you, but really customize them for your community because every community is different. One other part of the Urban Agenda uh, grant that the town got was bringing more activities into the downtown area. And I'm gonna put someone on the spot here by turning it over to either, either Peg or Olivia to talk about um, the, the events that are happening or, or planning to happen, but also a slogan and some ideas of slogans that uh, the town should consider to help brand downtown. It's called part of placemaking and branding. So I'll turn it over to one of you. Technical difficulties. Hi, I'm Olivia. Um, I'm interning in economic development, I'm working to do some programming at the Central Street Pedestrian Plaza this summer. Um, it's going to take place pretty regularly on Saturdays, so you're going to want to keep an eye out for that on the town website. Um, we hope to incorporate some um, resources for people and opportunities for potential job training resources and other organizations in town that have resources for folks. Um, so yeah, we hope to have some, some musical performances and food truck options for everyone and just something to do outside for fun after this year that we've had. So yeah, definitely keep an eye out for that. And yeah, I look forward to seeing you there. Oh, sure. And then the slogans that you can see, those are a couple ideas that we've brainstormed just to let people know that changes are happening downtown and that the Redevelopment Authority is working really hard. Um, and so we're hoping to hang some banners up just so that everybody driving by can get excited and, you know, have some pride in Southbridge and feel like they're a part of something great that's happening. Um, and then actually there's a survey online. I believe it's on the website. Is it on the website? We, we don't necessarily have it. It's on uh, Councillor Adams, I think, to share this. Okay. Yeah, I believe it's on a couple Councillor Facebook pages, the Southbridge local community Facebook page. And if you feel particularly strongly about any of the slogans that you want to see downtown, feel free to uh, cast a vote or send us your own idea. And 
um, yeah, hopefully we get something hanging up that makes everyone excited. So yeah, thank you. Thank you, Olivia. I'll just wrap things up quickly and then turn it back to Andrew. Um, again, I'm Jeff Faster with the BSC Group. Um, we are, have a, an office in Worcester, and this is my contact email. And I'm working with Peg Dean from the town. Um, she's here tonight also, and this is her contact. So um, if you want to get a hold of either one of us, feel free to do so. I don't think you're limited to the, either one of us, but we are certainly available if people have any ideas. Um, but with that, I'm going to try to go backwards and turn it back to Andrew and to see if there are any comments or questions. And I'm going to leave this slide up with the proposed slogans because someone may want to comment on what they like or don't like on these slogans. Thank you, Mr. Jeff. I appreciate that. Um, is there any questions from the Redevelopment Authority regarding tonight's presentation? So are there any members of the public who would like to question or make a comment in regard to tonight's presentation? Councillor Marchetti. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, through you. I was just wondering uh, what type of, how, how would you try to fill vacancies downtown? Uh, you say that it's your plan to try and fill vacancies, but how would you do that? What would be your strategy for getting new businesses downtown? Well, uh, can you hear me? Jim, yeah, you uh, he's asked. Strategy? So, Councillor Marchetti is asking, what would be the plan to fill these empty storefronts in the center of downtown? Is that correct? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Just a little choppy when it came in. Um, quite honestly, that's going to be a big challenge. I think a lot of the investments that have occurred or are about to occur are certainly going to draw more people into downtown and draw more interest to the downtown area. So, for example, when the recreational marijuana facility opens up, that will draw new customers into downtown, not just to the facility itself, but there's, I believe there's going to be some other retail there. Um, and that may result in people looking to grab a bite or pick up something else while they're in the downtown area. Um, there, if we feel strongly that amenities like the rail trail and maybe a river walk become draws to bring people into downtown, which will help retail and storefronts. Uh, people living downtown also um, create a demand, excuse me, <coughs> um, for retail. And if there are loan programs, well, there are loan programs, but if we can hook them up with property owners to get uh, businesses or residents living on the upper floors of some of these buildings, or to re redevelop some vacant parcels or vacant parcels adjacent to um, some underperforming buildings for residential, that'll bring new people into downtown. However, it is going to be a challenge. I'm not gonna avoid the question. Um, it's been a challenge for a while, but right now there's some renewed energy. And a lot of times uh, property owners or potential investors uh, they like to see a plan, which you have, and then they like to see that the town supports their own plan by investing in their own downtown. And I believe when the roadway improvements start, the uh, potential investors are going to see the town has what we call some skin in the game. They're investing in their own downtown area. <coughs> and many times that means, okay, to, a pro to an investor, I see the town is serious and I'm willing to invest because I see if we all work together that everything can be lifted up. Um, we are going to be looking for as many um, programs and assistance as we can for businesses and property owners. Um, but thank you. But they are limited. Um, the other thing that is happening as part of um, some grants that the town has received is in addition to this Urban Agenda grant, which is paying for what's going on tonight. The town is also participating in what's called the Local Rapid Recovery Program, which is a state program providing technical assistance to communities to help them recover economically from the effects of COVID. As part of that program, the town has access to experts in certain 
areas of interest or areas of concern. And one of them for Southbridge may be getting an expert to come in and advise on how to better market these empty storefronts in the downtown area, how, can, how businesses may be able to work together and have a unified marketing plan that they'd all benefit from. Um, so there are various resources there, but it is gonna be a challenge. But when you have some pioneers like Johnny and Gabe McCarthy who are investing in downtown, uh, that many times opens the eyes of some other people to say, yes, it's, it's worth it, things are gonna change. But there's no silver bullet, I won't, I'm not gonna hide that fact. All right, thank you. <clears throat> are there any other members of the public who would like to make a comment or ask a question in regarding to tonight's presentation? Seeing none, um, we would look to our next regularly scheduled um, meeting, which for the redevelopment authority, it's going to be next Thursday, May 6th, I would say, or would it be tomorrow night? No, the 6th. The 6th? All right, so next May 6th at 6.30. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn tonight's meeting? Do I have a second? Second. Before I call for a vote, I want to thank Jeff and Heather with BSC Group for their hard work and effort in tonight's presentation and is advising us over the last month. Um, it has been a rush of knowledge and information, but I think we've all kind of been reinvigorated to, to put more time and effort into what's going on into the center of town and get a reinvestment, especially to try to help the town recover from the pandemic. Um, I'd also like to thank Ms. Peg and Ms. Olivia for their hard work as well. Uh, Peg has been working diligently with us over the last, I'd say, two years, I think, roughly. Um, and she's, been, she's put a lot of time and effort and passion into the Redevelopment Authority and into the town of Southbridge. So all of you together have done a phenomenal job, and I continue to look forward to our meetings and the continued progress that we'll make as the months continue on. Uh, so. With that being said, uh, the motion is on the table. I will call a vote. Rick Clements? Yes. Holly Christo? Yes. Arthur Martin? Yes. Andrew Birch is a yes. The, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you.